And we are back. So I'm very excited to have my friend Fiona Pelham as our next guest. And we are talking about a topic that is near and dear to your heart. Um, you are one of the experts in the industry on this topic. And we are talking about sustainability. Um, so tell us a little bit. This is your first time on event icons. Tell us a little bit it about is. your background. Because for those who don't know, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, so for about 15 years, I have been running a not-for-profit, Positive Impact, whose vision is to create a sustainable event industry. And we use collaboration and education to have that happen. In the last three years, Positive Impact Events has really focused on partnerships that will make a difference to our industry. So we have over five partnerships, memorandum of understandings, affiliates, they're all named different things with different United Nations bodies. Okay. And that's really opening the door to the global event industry having a seat around the table to talk about what we do and why it's important. And I, I think that's important because we talk about, you know, I, right now I'm a meetings mean business ambassador. Mm. And it, it, I think as much as we focus on the importance of making sure that the entire world understands why our industry is important, I think it's also important that we understand the s sustainability that we as an industry bring to the table. Absolutely. So the IPCC report came out in November, and that's uh, a report which all global governments and businesses read. And one of the recommendations for keeping our carbon emissions below the 1.5 degree C, one of the recommendations was to travel less and use technology more for meetings. Yeah. It is vital that we have a seat around the table to say, you know what, when we're face to face, we collaborate, we innovate, we exchange ideas, right. and that's how we'll create a world to work for everybody. Right, and I think that that's important also to recognize because when we meet face to face, we can have these discussions about how do we bring sustainability because what pe some people don't realize is the events industry, we touch all these different areas and businesses and industries so being able to bring sustainability to those events and show them what we can do as a face-to-face -face meeting gives them ideas for what they can bring to their industry. Well, we have a, a great big opportunity right now. 2016, the Sustainable Development Goals came from the United Nations. They've been adopted obviously by governments, but also by businesses around the world. So these goals are now the language of business. Right. These goals go from how do we end food poverty to how do we bring around gender equality? How do we create a peaceful world? How do we have responsible consumption and production? Now, for each of those goals to be met, people will have to meet right. to collaborate, to exchange ideas, and that's what our industry does. Right. So we have a story to tell alongside each of those goals. So this is our magic opportunity to raise the profile of what we do by bringing people together face to face. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're working with a lot of different associations in the industry. Are you finding that you're getting the buy-in from them? You know, it, it's a challenge sometimes. Yeah. So Positive Impact, we are a neutral not-for-profit, which means that we're not, uh, we're not an association. We go out and we look for funding from different partners, and we use that funding to create tools and education to make change. I think sometimes in our industry, we get very insular looking, mm -hmm. and we look at which association is doing what. Yeah. Um, uh, just being within Europe, we've got the Events Industry Council, we've got the Joint Meetings Industry Council. Now, when you go back to that big high-level strategic piece, when we're talking about September the 24th and having a plan in place with global governments and global businesses that represents the event industry, those businesses and governments aren't going to care if it's come from one association or another, let alone the sport world and the culture world that yeah. is involved in events. So the role that Positive Impact plays is bringing those people around the table. And to be honest, sometimes it's uncomfortable right. because people don't necessarily want to have to talk about this or think about this yeah, or it uh, doesn't always fit with the conversation of... It's not a fun topic. Not always. <laughs> not always. Not always. And, I, and it's sometimes it's personally hard because I'm yeah. so 
aware of this topic. Um, I did a webinar on Global Meeting Industry Day and I had four young people on it aged from seven to 14. Mm -hmm. And um, they'd been involved in the climate change protests around the world. And the 14 year old said, I'm, I'm never gonna fly for business because that would mean that my job was more important than the planet and what can be more important than the planet? That's so interesting. <laughs> And then last night I was speaking to a head of a massive association who said, oh, Fiona, young people always protest. By the time they get into their job, they'll forget that and they'll get on a plane. And I'm not so sure, and it's my job and the team at Positive Impact and our 300 ambassadors who volunteer around the world yeah. to really speak up and say, we can't presume that everyone understands the value of face-to-face -face meetings. No, not at all. And I think unless we as an industry really put our foot forward and say this is something that is important to us I, I think we do run that risk of people not under understanding the give and take yeah you know and I would say I was just speaking to some of your team before this interview started I, I think there's probably lots of young people joining our industry now yeah. who are wondering how they put that foot forward mm -hmm. maybe their boss maybe their CEO is saying don't focus on this you know yeah. it'll be fine people will understand face to face and really, if it's not us putting that foot forward, then who is it? Mm. And that's pretty much what I tell myself every day. <laughs> I mean, yes. And, and oftentimes I do get asked, uh, who are you to be bringing these people around the table? And who am I? I'm just passionate about sustainability yeah. and, and the future of our industry and, and the planet. And that's enough to take action. So Now, do you work with any universities? Because I, I have a master's degree in event and meeting management. And I can't recall that during my two-year program that we talked about sustainability. So are we working with the, and every day it seems like another new, uh, you know, continuing education uh, university major pops up. Mm -hmm. um, so are we talking to these universities to make sure that these young people who are investing and deciding, they didn't just fall into this industry, this is an industry they want to be part mm -hmm. of that they understand from the get-go that yeah. this is something that's important? That's a wonderful question, and there's two things I'll say about that. Firstly, with Positive Impact, we also reach out to the sustainability professionals, mm -hmm. and that includes the young people entering the industry. So they might not be yeah. in events, but they're focused on sustainability, and we try yeah. and tell them about events. But then I'm glad you asked me about the universities, because just this year we launched a wonderful collaboration with Leeds Beckett University. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to grow this to at least 10 universities over the next uh, year. And um, we had students be given the opportunity to be really vocal about what they think around sustainability. We let them take over some of our social media, not always with amazing consequences, and yeah. often with fantastic, unexpected consequences. Right. Um, but you know, they're a voice of our future. So yes, we're looking for more and more university partners to replicate that. And the academic side, this is now part of what they're the taught. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's, that's great because I think, you know, as, let me rephrase this. What do you find is your biggest challenge <laughs> in getting people to buy into sustainability? Is it a generational thing? The biggest challenge is the same as any other industry. So when I speak to my peers, the, the change makers in, in different industries, yeah. we all have the same challenge. And it's people that have been in their job for a long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to retire in about 10 years and they're used to things being how things are. And this is a big change to make, yeah. and it's quick. You know, I keep saying this date, September the 24th, that's when the UN Sustainability Summit is. That's when heads of government and industry will have their plans in. Now, to turn something around from now till September the 24th. Not a lot of time. No, and in the traditional world of big business, there's not enough time. Mm -hmm. So that is where uh, people who haven't grown up uh, with that entrepreneurial experience who haven't grown up with that passion and clarity for sustainability will kind of be saying oh let's just push Pump this the on, the, on the back burner <laughs> yeah. but I can tell you there's some clear things that are going to be happening in our, in our industry around sustainability in the next year um, UNICEF are going to be launching guidelines around human rights when okay. planning an event uh, the UNFCCC will be looking at carbon measurement for events as will a lot of like local uh, cities 
Um, UN Environment has already issued five key environmental focuses that the tourism sector should look at for events. And Positive Impact worked with the Association of British Professional Conference Organisers to translate that into event language. Great. Um, so there's going to be more and more of this movement happening and we've got to move quickly and make the most of it. Now, what can event planners and event professionals, what can they do to bring this and make sure that it's important to their businesses, mm. that this is something that's addressed? Because we were in Salt Lake City last year and that venue has done some amazing things for yes. sustainability. And so in some ways, you know, picking a certain destination based on what they've done for sustainability, mm -hmm. it makes an impact when you start realizing that you're losing business because you haven't done the investment. Yes. Right. So as event professionals, what can we do? So first of all, I'm going to start with a shameless plug and I'm going to say become a positive impact ambassador. Four times a year, we send out a PowerPoint that will help event professionals speak about sustainability. So that's just a basic, no barriers of entry that will just help you out. Yeah. Secondly, to pick up on your destinations point, I do think the destinations have a leadership role and I think it's it makes sense. They can market their destinations through it. And we saw a wonderful example with Monterey County Convention and Visitors Bureau this year. Mm -hmm. They put their marketing money behind a campaign to address the role of plastics in oh, the event great. industry. Um, there is an app that's available. There's a free toolkit for event professionals to sit down when they're planning their event and say, where do we think plastic's gonna come up? One of the challenges we have in the industry is wanting this checklist, wanting this, okay, no plastic bottles. Easy, right? um, <laughs> yes, we want it to be easy. And we want someone to tell us what to do. Yeah. One of the things that I would advise us all to do is get used to this mentality of understanding what are our own challenges for our own event mm -hmm. and taking that time during the event planning stage to identify where are we creating plastic waste mm -hmm. or food waste or what are the sustainability challenges and opportunities for us with our specific event because we are very time poor but a checklist for a small 10 person event in south it's africa not the same. no not the same <laughs> as a big sport event in north america right. so this is our opportunity as an industry to be creative to collaborate with local ngos that can help us to really communicate the legacy of meeting face to face. Now I've seen some really interesting um, things that you wouldn't even think about because I'm glad you bring up the creativity. Yes. Um, at MPIWEC was um, in Indianapolis and they had these giant, you know, banners and things. Yes. So tell a little bit about what they did with those. Oh, I, the banner story is wonderful. It's a great story. <laughs> so. Um, because I'm known for sustainability, a few people said, hey, there's big banners. Fiona, can we get them made into bags? Well, the team at Visit Indy were already on the case. And these banners were made into bags and they sold out incredibly quickly. So fast. And that is the business case for yeah. every event to look at what is our waste and think of the circular economy piece. Yeah. How can our waste become... Uh, another product. Now, with circular economy, it should be using materials that can go back into the ground. And part of the project I mentioned, Monterey County and Convention Visitors Bureau, is to work with a company called um, MD, MBDC, who are behind the Cradle to Cradle initiative. Okay. And they're gonna give us two ways to remove plastic from the industry using this Cradle to Cradle material. So lanyards maybe that could be composted or put out on the grass and just dissolve. Yeah. Um, but I think we have an opportunity, like you say, to be creative. Yeah. What is one of the most surprising, unsustainable things that people don't think about when it comes to events and meetings? It, the, the thing that gets me is that it's so obvious. It's um, water and in places where you can drink the tap water, mm -hmm. the amount of bottled water that is always on display. Um, and I've seen speakers at a sustainability event and the audience have said, we can't trust what you're saying because you have a bottle of tap water in front of you or a plastic bottle. Now that has nothing to do with the speaker. The speaker right. didn't ask for that they, to be there, there yeah. but the event organizer did. So, so that's one of the, the personal things that I notice. Yeah, well, I, I think that's also something, this is my first time in Europe. Mm. And so one of the things that I noticed instantly when I got here 
was I haven't seen a plastic bottle anywhere. They're all glass. Yeah. And yeah. we asked, I overheard someone asking the hotel if they had a, a, a plastic bottle of water. They're like, oh, no, 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 everything's glass because we're trying to get yeah. rid of plastic waste. And I loved um, one of the last uh, social media pieces I saw from IMAX on the way here, which was saying to bring your own water, bring bottle, your own water bottle so yeah. that you can refill that. And that is just an obvious win-win water stations everywhere at yeah. events. No, it's um, it's interesting. So, I think, you know, with the ambassador program and everything that's coming up, where can people go for more information? Well, definitely the Positive Impact website, www.positiveimpactevents.com. Um, that will give you all sorts of information on how to get involved. I would also suggest following up with your own association we mm -hmm. all belong to different associations but a lot of associations are doing different things um, and follow up with your own internal business so if you are an event organizer within a corporate company there will be a sustainability director and they will be doing a sustainability annual report right. their report will not cover the scope of your events but if you build a relationship with them it could do and it will in the future, so it's good to build that relationship now. Yeah. If you're a member of the event industry supply chain, this is now part of your marketing message. So mm -hmm. talk to your marketing team about how you can spend your marketing budget on getting involved in campaigns that make a difference. These, the big thing that I want to keep pointing everybody to is this deadline we have of the 24th of September. Yeah. Um, and the Positive Impact team are looking to collaborate with all the industry associations across sport, business culture, and all the different business partnerships so that we have a commitment in and a seat around the table that is healthy for the future of our industry. So for anyone who is a member of an industry association, what can we do as members to kind of put some pressure on our organizations that we're members of. Yeah, ask them, are they getting involved with the acceleration commitment that's going in to the United Nations? Ask mm -hmm. them, have they got education around sustainability? Yeah. Ask them to report back on their annual meeting and how they implemented sustainability. Um, ask them, can they have roundtables? Site is an example of an association that did something really interesting last year. They put funding behind the creation of materials to help their okay. members. So um, we work with them to create a roadmap, and that means that any of their members can just gather their team, their colleagues in a room, and identify what their sustainability issues are. That's um, great. I do also think we have to go beyond our associations. Mm -hmm. it, it, this is for all of us to take action on now, and our time is limited. I'm, I'm like the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> We've got to move, people. We've got to move quick. We're running out of yes, time. Yeah. Yes, we really are. If, if there is no acceleration commitment, and an acceleration commitment is just a plan with targets, if that isn't in with the UN on the 24th of September, we're not sitting around the table talking about the power of events. No. We're going to be waiting for people to come to us and say, I've got to cut my carbon, you need to do this. Um, I just led a policy, sustainability policy roundtable mm -hmm. with, um, within the IMEX event this morning, and we were discussing about policy for food waste, plastic waste, and carbon emissions. And there is policy that will help us. There could be more policy, and there could be less in certain areas. But it's just key for us, the event professionals, to be having those conversations and be involved in shaping that rather than being shaped by it. Right. Do you see any potential penalties or things in the future where if, you, if you're not doing these guidelines and not following through with this for your event that you could be penalized? The most obvious one is carbon taxes. And mm -hmm. this conversation has been around now for a while and it's coming back because we've got 12 years to address uh, our, the, our temperatures on the planet. So at an extreme, carbon taxes would be each individual person giving a certain amount of carbon credits to use. Now, can you imagine, Alex, if you had a certain amount of credits and I said to you, hey, do you want to use those to fly to WEC MPI? Yeah. Or do you want to use them on your holiday? I'm not going to ask you what you would say, right. but that's the potential future, worst case scenario for right. our industry. Um, and there's the opportunity for us to be sitting around the table with the global businesses saying, let's remind you the value of face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. Let's remind you if you prioritize the use of uh, carbon for flying, this is the outputs that will happen. So for example, IMEX is a wonderful like, 
example, how many meetings is everyone having at this one event? Yeah. Probably a lot right. rather than individual travel. So and, and that makes sense to bring everyone together rather yeah. than having a bunch of smaller you know, yeah. meetings. Um, but I think that that's interesting. And I think, you know, anytime we talk about a topic that, that's difficult or that is a challenge, yeah. um, I think bringing it back to, no, 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 there's money involved here. Absolutely. The economic conversation yeah. is key. So I spend half of my time over with the sustainability people in the UN and the governments talking about the value of face-to-face -face yeah. and how that results in business. And then the other half of my time over within the event industry where I'm saying us being sustainable, us having a voice around the table will ensure that our economic impact is not negatively affected in the future. The world all boils down to economics, yep. um, and there's an economic, there's a business case here. Our future event attendees want us to do this. Yep. Our global governments and business policy, I mean, global businesses are all aligning with the sustainable development goals. They want this to be done. Yeah. So uh, if we want more business and to market ourselves better, this is the way to do it. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is, if you're trying to get buy-in from your bosses and from your organization, mm. bring them money. They're gonna, their ears Absolutely. are gonna perk up and they're gonna, what? Yeah, what? we've done a couple of webinars on this as well. Yeah. So we did one for Global Meeting Industry Day, which might be worth listening to around the, the business case for this. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, it's sometimes so obvious to me because I spend my life in this area. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, canary in the coal mine. Hey, we've got to do this to, yeah. to survive. So. But. Yeah, is there is there any last you know tip that you want to give our audience about you know what they could be doing? Yeah, I would just say speak up yeah. for this. If you have, there are so many event professionals that are passionate about this, mm -hmm. and I would say speak up and be open for collaboration. It is not always easy to speak up. I know that. I find that personally to myself, and that's after years of doing it. Um, but it's going to take each of us, and if not us standing up, then who? Right. Well, thank you so much, Fiona, for joining us. I think there were so many amazing takeaways. Good. And um, we were so glad to finally have you on the show yeah. and uh, be on your home, you know, your turf in <laughs> Europe. 